Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. If you're an editor and you're trying to understand how to animate something in After Effects, I'm going to show you super easy After Effects map animations where you don't even have to draw one keyframe. First, I got to give a shout out to Tim Kurkowski over at Adobe Systems on the After Effects team. Great guy, always a wonderful resource for me. I started playing around with this and uh, he really helped me find the, the absolute easiest way. Now, if you're coming from After Effects and you're an animator, this is like second nature to you. A lot of editors don't know these tips. They know that you can do a lot more in After Effects than you can do in something like Premiere Pro, uh, and that's why I'm doing this. And I'm also showing you how to copy and paste and use paths for shapes, for motion paths, masks, all in one so you don't have to draw them from, from scratch. So we're going to start in Photoshop with a layered Photoshop file, and then we'll animate the different layers in After Effects. Let's get going. All right, so here is a multi-layered Photoshop file. Our map is here on the bottom. And then I've got a couple of stars drawn as shapes, a line, and a little um, aircraft over there. And with that aircraft, I have a Photoshop drop shadow on here that will stay uh, available so that when, he, when the plane is flying around, it has a, a bit of height, uh, it looks like, as it's flying over the map. Of course, you can animate every single one of those uh, layer styles, including the, the drop shadow itself, so you could actually have the drop shadow change and make that the plane look like it's getting higher. But let's jump into After Effects. So the first thing we need to do is bring in the Photoshop file, and I do that typically by double-clicking in this area here. You can also choose File Import, and it'll bring in the uh, Photoshop file. You have three different options. We're going to use the composition. We're going to bring it in as a composition and retain the layer size. We don't have to use um, editable um, styles. I'm just going to merge them for now. You want to leave them editable if you want to uh, edit those properties later. Click OK and it comes in as this comp. Double click on it, open it up, and here we have each one of the same layers that we had in Photoshop. That's nothing new, but it's important to understand. So you'll notice that obviously we have no animation in here yet. How do we get the animation? Well, if you look at the line, this is the path that was drawn inside Photoshop. If you hit the M key for mask, you'll see the mask path. One really, really important a part of After Effects is we're going to be copying mask paths and uh, position information and shape paths. You have to twirl down and dig down and click on things. If you just click on one thing and, and paste, every time you have vector information in the clipboard, it will always come in as a mask. Sometimes you want this, but sometimes you don't. If you don't, you got to find where you want to paste the information. So right now we're going to grab the information from this red line. I want you to notice that by default, After Effects thinks that this open path is a closed path. It drew the line, but then it finished by connecting the end point to the beginning point. We don't want that. Tim gave me a really easy way to correct that. All right, so let's select the path and copy that. And we can just uh, choose Control c or Command-C on the Mac. Now that we've copied this from the line, we can turn the line off. We don't need that line anymore. Click on the aircraft and tap the P key for position information. And I want my uh, mine to start about two seconds in. So I'll select the position property and paste. And what you'll notice, if I change this to a dark green, there's our path and there's our closed path going to the end. Here's Tim's tip. Click on the very last keyframe and tap the delete key. It might look like you're actually deleting more of that path. You're not, you're just deleting the end of that path. So there we go. There's our motion path. And you'll notice this is roving in time keyframes. So if I drag the right hand side, it goes slower and it brings the rest of the keyframes with it. This helps to create a good, clean animation. But what you might also notice, if we turn the line back on, it's not lined up. 
There's no way to get around this. The copying and pasting of the origin data uh, or doesn't have the, the actual origin of where that is. So the this is a really easy fix. Don't panic. Don't scratch your head and say, well, why if I copied it from here, why didn't I paste in here? Don't worry, let's move it. How do we move it? Click on the name position and you'll notice all the keyframes are selected. This is essential. Now I'm just going to use my scroll wheel and my uh, space bar, grab the uh, first path or the first point and drag this back into place. All right, so now we have the start of this. You'll notice that for whatever reason, the plane is off just a little bit. If you go back to the aircraft and tap the A key and change the anchor point, okay? So what is this going to look like now? So if I hit my space bar to play this, it follows it along, but it's not really following it as well as it should. And After Effects has got a very simple fix for that. Right click on the aircraft layer, go to Transform, and choose Auto Orient. You could also choose Control Alt Zero on Windows, uh, Command Option um, O and we want to orient it along the path. Well, pretty simple. The first thing you might notice though, it's facing the wrong way. So let's tap the R key and just change the rotation. There's two different values in here. We're not changing the number of rotations. We're changing the degrees, which is the second one. Now, if we watch this, look at that. It follows the path perfectly. Sweet mama! Holy smokes! Remember I told you this is an easy tip for editors. You did not have to animate that path. Let's say somebody gave you the map and that's the coordinates and that's where they want the, the map to be drawn. You didn't have to draw it. You just copied and pasted it. What about the line? We don't want the line to be there. We want the line to be uh, created as the plane uh, reveals it. With, for that, we do have to get rid of this line, so I'm going to turn the eyeball off. I'm going to go back to the position keyframe, click on the word position, and copy this. Remember when we copied the line, it had a closed path, and we got rid of that in position? Because I, I don't need the closed path, I'm going to copy it from position not from the line. So we have vector information in the clipboard inside After Effects that can be used for path, motion path, masks, and shapes. All right, so we need to create a shape. The easiest way to do that is to make sure nothing is selected and get the pen tool. At this point, click on the fill and make sure that we have no fill. So right beside the, the color fill, the name fill, click on no fill. And that's the first one. On the stroke, click on stroke and make sure it's on the second one. And we can just leave that as white right now. It doesn't matter. Click, click. And I like to do it this way because I don't, it, it, you don't have to create a shape layer and add a path and all of that. We've just done it for us. So remember I said to twirl down. Let's twirl down into our shape path, down into our contents, down into the shape, click on the path and paste. And again, we've pasted in the path, but it's way the heck over there. So let's click on one of the points and drag that back over to there. You know, it might not hurt to turn the line back on at this time just to see if we've got it lined up the way we should. Make sure you have the whole thing selected. All right. So how do we draw this? Because right now, it's just a shape. Well, let's go to where our first keyframe is for the plane taking off. And what's interesting about these shape layers is this little add right here. And that's in the contents. Click on that little triangle and choose Trim Paths. And you'll see a new parameter show up. And if we twirl this down, there's a start and an end point. Let's go to the end point and drag this back. Oh, look at that. There is our path. So we're going to start with the end at zero at a keyframe. We're going to go to the end of where the path is drawn. And I'm holding the shift key as I move my playhead and it snaps to that. And then I'm going to change the end value to 100%. 
Now we all, the only thing we have to do is go to the stroke, change the color, change the size, make this 10 points, and just below the stroke, there are dashes. There are no dashes by default. If I click in here, I'll add a dash. I'm gonna make my dash 25. And now watch what happens. Now the plane flies over. And it looks like it's revealing. The only error we have here is the dashes are above the plane. So we need to change the order of that. So let's twirl these up, make sure that the aircraft is above everything else. Right, there we go. There's the drawing of the path and the airplane flying along. Now the only thing I added on top of this, just to make this a little bit more interesting, is I brought in uh, this giant 8K cloud layer. There's a link in the description where you can download this. And I'll bring this over top of the map itself. Hit the scale, S key for scale, and we'll scale this down a little bit. Hit the P key and move the position to the left. We're going to add a position keyframe. Go to the end. And drag this the X coordinates from left to right. You can leave it like that, but if you want to add a little bit more realism, look for turbulent displace and drag that on the layer. And we're going to change the evolution value. So at the beginning, we have a keyframe, and at the end, we're going to click on the number two and now we're gonna evolve, you see these, they're kind of undulating clouds. Obviously they're hiding everything. The last step would be to change this from normal. And if you don't see the modes over on the bottom left here, you've got buttons over here to turn different parts of After Effects um, layer controls on. We want the clouds to be a screen. And let's tap the T key take the opacity of those clouds down. So now we have the clouds. Now we have the clouds floating around and the plane and the stroke all in one. We did have to add a couple of keyframes for the clouds and the turbulent displays, but not that hard. And you can leave them off. I'm just trying to take this to another level to show you all of the things that you could do um, with all the layers inside. So if you're an editor and you're looking at After Effects and you're scratching your head saying, how do I get the best of it? Uh, what I really wanted this to show you, especially last week, if, if you watched me how to, if you watched me show you how to do this in Premiere Pro, there were a lot of masking steps you had to do to move that around. And in here, we just did it by copying and pasting our effects very, very easily without having to draw any keyframes. Wow, I hope you uh, found that uh, informative. If you're new to video reveal, come on, take a moment, please, and subscribe. If you've already seen the value that you have here at Video Reveal, then I'm asking you please to support us at Patreon. Something as simple as a dollar a month is going to make a difference to us really well. So please support us. We thank everyone. And thanks again uh, for Tim. Uh, thanks uh, for Tim uh, at Adobe for his help on this tutorial, just to clean it up a little bit and make it simple. Well, my name is Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.